everyone. Thank you for your patience. I know you all know who you're here to hear from. Why don't, why don't we have a seat? Yeah, sure. All right, my name is Sal Barry. I have a podcast called Puck Junk, and I'm honored to get to interview Mr. Bernie Perrant. Uh, I'm sure most of you know about his career accolades, but in case you need a reminder, two-time first-team All-Star, two-time Vezina Trophy winner, two-time Conn Smite Trophy winner, and two-time Stanley Cup champion. That's, that's not much. It should have been four or five times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to ask some questions, and then I think we'll open it up to the audience because they've been so patient. Um, so I think the first thing I want to ask you just about the convention in general, I know you've gone to a lot of conventions, uh, you know, to sign autographs or to speak to people. Does it surprise you how big conventions have gotten over the years that people want to save some of these things? They, yeah, it surprises me. You know, they, um, they might have said something different than what I am, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, but it, <clears throat> you know what? It's always when, when you win the championship, you know, and, um, and I look back at the people we had at the games, you know, watching the games the whole bit. It's just, it just, you know what? There's nothing but being grateful of, of what happened in their career, you know, with um, ups and downs, of course, but the, the beautiful, beautiful years when we won the Stanley Cup and the whole bit, it was just incredible. Okay, so another thing I want to ask you, really curious about this, you broke into the NHL when it was still the original six teams, mm -hmm. but then by the time you retired, there were 18 teams in the league. What was the biggest change during that time? Because well, it you know what, the, um, <clears throat> I started with Boston in 1965, and I played two years with Boston, and then the expansion came, six more teams and Philadelphia was one of them. And um, I got drafted by um, Philadelphia. And um, it, it was just, it, you know what, it just, I think it was great and, you know, so great. It was great because it gave so many players like me, a lot of other players, a chance to really go out and perform and, um, and do the thing that you love in life, yeah. Now, you also got to play with your hero, Jacques Plante. What was that like? Because many people don't get to play with their hero. Well, I, I, you know what? This, this came after I got traded from, from the Flyers to Toronto, okay? And, and I was disappointed, right? And I'm driving to Toronto, and I'm saying, what happened? What's going to happen or whatever? Didn't realize that I was going to spend two years with Jacques Plante. Okay, and I'm sure you, you're aware of Jacques Blount, right? And, um, and you know what? And, and as a matter of fact, his sister in Montreal lived next door to us. And I would watch him every year, would come down once uh, during the summer to visit his sister. Think about this, a big convertible car. He had the cowboy hat on. He would get out of his car with the cigar, you know, walk you know, walked like a champion, which he was, you know, to go uh, visit the sister, it was a beautiful thing. But for me, you know, what happened with me is, I watched him play, you know, for, at the beginning, the first year, and um, he played more games than I did, of course. And then, and then finally I asked him, I said, Jacques, I said, can you teach me? Can you help me? He said, of course. And then that's when I became a different goalie. You know, he, what, a, what, a great, um, what a great individual he was, yeah. Now, another thing that I found interesting about your career, and I didn't know this before, is that you were actually the first NHL player to sign with the World Hockey Association team when that league just started. What do you remember about that? Well, this, when, when you look at that situation, I shared this with people. I'm glad you asked a question here because you know what? A, I could have stayed with the National Hockey League, but I was, you got to take chances in life, you know? And the World Hockey League called me and asked me if I would like to join them. 
And, you know, you had National Hockey League, of course. Then I said, why not? If it doesn't work out, I'll come back, National Hockey League. And halfway through the first season, it didn't work out. We played in front of 500 people, and it just it wasn't the same. So I came back, and think about this now. And when I came back, at the end of the season, that's when Toronto traded me back to the Flyers, and we won two Stanley Cups. So if I would have played safe, I would have never been back in, in Philly to, to help the team, you know, to be part of a, uh, a beautiful team that won two Stanley Cups. So I always share this with people, that in life you gotta take, you gotta take a chance. You take a chance, but also nobody's successful by themselves. Okay, you know, you learn this in sports. You have to be a part of a team, a good team, if you want to succeed in life. You know, it's very important. And the fact that they ended up with the Flyers with a great team, then we ended up with, and we won two Stanley Cups. Okay, so we got to wrap it up. Uh, why don't we open it up to questions? If anybody has a question they'd like answered, a burning question. If not, I can think of five or six more. Well, then I'll ask you this. Maybe was there an opponent that you did not like facing? Uh, yeah, the one, which is a good friend of mine, by the way, was uh, Bobby Hall. And the reason for is because Bobby Hall used to shoot the puck at 110, 115 miles an hour. Okay? And I don't care if you had a mask or not, a 115 miles an hour is fast, man. And it would come, come across the blue line. Never forget this. It, big shoulders, you know, curved blade, big smile on his face. I'm looking at him and said, please, Lord, let him score so he would miss me. <laughs> but he's, good, he's good, good, a great individual. He was a good friend. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a mic drop to me, so I guess we'll wrap it up here. Thank you for uh, talking with us today. We appreciate your time. Well, thank you, guys. And, and you know what? This is a great game. A beautiful game, and of course the style has changed quite a bit, you know, from when we played. And just one, one more thing briefly I want to share is, you look at the goalies now, and I, I, I want to talk about the goalies quickly here. The equipment they have is so stiff. You know, the pads, you know, they can't turn their feet. This is why they drop to their knees all the time. Well, guess what? When you drop to your knees, you can challenge the shooters. You know, and I, I, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy about this. That although they're great goalies, but the equipment interferes a lots of time about what they want to do. Yes. How do you say? Why do NHL goalies always go? Why do NHL goalies always go down? Well, because because of the the pads they're wearing, they're they're only this thick. But if you have a close look at them, they're real stiff, and because they're so stiff, they can't move their, their foot sideways. So if there's a shot, as soon as somebody takes a shot, if it's a shot on the ice, unless you drop to your knees and you spread your feet, uh, you're not, you won't be able to make the save. So, so what I'm saying here is a thing about the philosophy behind this. You drop to your knees to, to cover as much room as you can with, with the net, right? Now, if, if the play changes directions, then you have a problem because you're on your knees and you see goalies pushing themselves back and forth on their knees all the time. And when you do this, you can challenge a shooter because you're on your knees. Very, very difficult. And for me, watching the game and see the way they play at times, you know, it's just unbelievable what they do. Yeah, very good. But anyway, they, I just want to share something with you quickly very quickly here. I remember when I played, you know, people threw stuff at me on the ice when I had bad games. And uh, sadly to see, I recognize a few people here tonight. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys. Yeah.